fact, the point I've always wanted to express in that video is, although we showed you in the last video, current flagship phones in terms of image quality can basically compete with APS-C format cameras. Even if you use a lower quality lens, it can still beat flagship APS-C cameras like the A6700. Some people then asked, are flagship phones really that impressive? Are they comparable to full frame cameras? Because we've done comparisons before, for example, APS-C format cameras paired with better quality lenses, they're on par with full frame cameras. I've also compared phones to full frame cameras recently, like early Huawei phones versus Nikon cameras comparing X6 Pro with Sony's ZV-11 before, including 13U and the UX-28. What I really want to say is I don't think phones beat full frames due to image quality. It's more because of other factors. For instance, I recently bought a Nikon Z63 to help a young lady with a photo shoot. At that time, she asked me, with this big pro camera, surely it's much better than a phone, right? I thought about which would be better. Not necessarily. I suddenly thought, why not compare? Xiaomi 14U just updated its firmware. It now supports portrait mode at 120 mm. Z63 has a 24 to 120 mm f4 lens also at 120 mm i was curious about the comparison here are the photos left is obvious right is nikon 24 to 120 mm f4 on z63 in the small images you might not see much difference after shooting with 14u the lady was shocked flagship phones now rival cameras can this phone do that it looks enhanced, more real, but do you think the phone can? Yes, it can. Of course, as people with experience in photography, we can definitely see that the difference is still quite significant. Small pictures are hard to distinguish, but when we zoom in, it's clear that the Z63 has many more details like hair strands, facial resolution, skin textures, and overall finish. This is certainly due to the Huafu camera with quite a good lens. The image quality is excellent, which is pretty normal. This setup costs upwards of 20,000 yuan. But the issue is that the young lady really can't make it out. You can see the effect of the background blur, the light spots behind, and even the Xiaomi 14U is a bit softer since it's computer generated. But the main character's cutout, the head ornament, and even the lantern on a plastic screen are extremely detailed, including the foreground, which also appears somewhat blurred. Of course, if you insist on saying that the hair ornament isn't well selected, that's indeed an issue with the algorithm. Just think. Last year, none of the smartphone manufacturers could properly select even the hair strands. This year, the accuracy of hair selection, including both the foreground and background, is almost perfect. Just imagine next year when the algorithms advance even further, when AI improves, what will the results look like? Everyone knows that AI is rapidly progressing and evolving and every year brings a new surprise. Later, I also adjusted some scenes and made a comparison with the phone. You should know that the Xiaomi 14U was shot with its weakest telephoto setting since its sensor is also smaller, 1 hour. 5 inch plus a fairly small aperture of f. The direct output looks like this. Isn't that quite shocking? On the right, my Z63 photo was slightly adjusted, otherwise the overall exposure isn't too great. You can take a look at the effect of the background blur behind it, particularly with this bamboo. I specifically took this photo here because bamboo has a very complicated structure. I wanted to see how the 14U would handle such intricately structured bamboo leaves. You'll find the processing is quite good. At a glance, it doesn't look fake. The foreground character stands out, but the hair blends into the background. Zooming in, the resolution is a bit worse, but the young lady doesn't mind, as she can't really tell. We then compared it with the X100U85MM, as I think 85MM might work better for this angle. The hair details and background blur are nice. When I showed her this phone, she liked it even more. Wow, this looks even better than the 14U we just saw. When zoomed in, the Z63's full-frame camera showed lots of detail. Skin texture is clear. That's expected for a 20000 plus UN setup. If a 5000 UN flagship phone isn't as good, it should be tossed, right? But the question is, as we discussed before, are these extra features necessary? Are they meaningful? For instance, when I take these posed photos for the young lady, we don't need such high resolution and detail because I won't be editing these photos and later post-processing costs extra. The lady wants to shoot in this style. She thinks she can edit the photos herself. To save some money, she only needs to pay for the photo shoot. But through this comparison, you'll notice that with the X100 Ultra, the pearls on the headpiece are clearer, performing a bit better than Xiaomi's 14 Ultra. And when zoomed in, Although there's some sharpening, the level of detail and texture is more solid, right? It also smoothed out some facial imperfections because with a phone, after you shoot, it's already post-processed. So I can immediately share these photos, quickly transfer them to her. Unlike with a camera where I'd have to import to a computer first.
then use WeChat or something. It's a hassle. Plus, the phone photos are already edited, so the lady will actually feel phone photos better meet her needs. Everyone can see this photo too. The background blur between the doors. I think it's done quite well after seeing the phone photos. And then the camera photos. She decisively chose the phone, especially for photos like these. More are posted on the arch of her foot. They don't need such high resolution. It's a big strain on post-processing too. She told me before, many cameras, especially those with very high megapixels, the phone can't even open those files. So forget about editing them later. Actually, 12 MP on a phone is enough. It's more suitable than a camera. It's like driving a car. No matter how fast, say you're driving an F1 car. Sure, it's fast on a racetrack, but on regular roads or for daily commutes, driving an F1 would be crazy. We have a sports car at home too. But for daily grocery runs or picking up friends, driving that car would be ridiculous. Like, I recently watched Jackie's video. He talked about his D-Class luxury car. I really agree with his philosophy. In fact, this car wins, not in saying its price is expensive. The interior is more luxurious or how fast it was. Rather, it is said that this car is just for the scene of daily use. That's just like a mobile phone. You zoom in and you will indeed find out it's not as good at image resolution as the camera like D. Howe and is definitely inferior to some Porsche or anything like that. But the question is not necessary, including this set of photos is also this one is the X100 Ultra main shot cut in 35mm beat with Nikon ZFC paired with Yono's 23F1 4. I told you about this shot when I was doing a show earlier. Let's zoom in and see later. You'll find that the resolution is pretty good. The quality of the whole painting is also very good. If you put it in small pictures, you can't see the difference at all. So the effect of such a film, just enough to satisfy the words of the young lady, you don't have to bring such a big camera anymore. Of course, I'm also doing the Z63 review, including is also to test the cloud of intelligence and overflow. But you want to think about it if the young lady for the phone. This picture quality is already very satisfying. You still eat in the pit and eat in the pit with such a heavy stabilizer. Bring such a big shot, bring a full frame camera, you've been busy for half a day. Little sister, I don't feel it, is it not worth what is gained? You have a lot of equipment with you, you may not last long before it's over, but if you use a mobile phone, it's lighter. There was no problem. Shooting for a day, another one is more important, automatic optimization of portrait mode. This many people only shoot the scenery, unaware of this problem because no one usually shoots, there was no young lady shooting, so this feature is yes for them, nothing to use, he didn't realize how important this was. But if you shoot people in portrait mode for skin optimization, the removal of blemishes is very important. For example, I said that I would go out with the young lady to shoot. When you zoom in on, you can really see the Z63 the shoot well clearly. The flaws on the face are very clear potholes and uneven color, but does it mean anything to the young lady? The these things are so clearly filmed for them. On the contrary, it is a very resistant thing to feel how you, this camera is like this, but in the opposite direction, Xiaomi Mi 14 Ultra Skin Facial Optimization. There are some slimming features, of course, you can do that later. Continue editing in the album. Such a photo was also shown to the young lady on the spot. He also made it very clear, I like to shoot on my mobile phone, I like to turn it this way. You look at the camera, it's beautiful. Yes, camera, yes, your phone is so clear. Then I'm a good phone, even if there are some flaws on the painting. The rope of the balloon was not judged, and how a lot of people just care about this kind of detail, very small dots. But the target that was photographed, he probably didn't care about these things at all. Instead, he would care about something else. For example, the skin has not been optimized, is it good or not? These, if you don't shoot people often, it may be difficult for you to understand why this thing is important, like you should see a lot of them on a regular basis, this kind of boyfriend won't take pictures. Things the young lady is crazy about are genuine, I assure you. If you can easily take beautiful photos with a flagship phone, wouldn't that solve many problems? Like her, she doesn't realize the value of a camera's better resolution and clarity. Actually, spending 20-30k on a camera is completely unnecessary for them. Instead, a flagship phone costing a few thousand is perfect for daily shooting. Like where we went, the scenery was also very nice. Take a look at how this turned out. I don't see a huge difference between a flagship phone and a 20-30k camera. At least for her, she doesn't see camera clarity as an advantage. She prefers the phone's auto adjustments and skin optimization. It can save you many steps, especially the X100 Ultra. Though it looks fake, its optimization is really quite impressive, including skin processing, portrait keying, focus simulation, and background light spots. I think this performance is already very, very good. She looked at this photo for ages, saying it was her favorite. It's ready to post on social media right away. But with a camera, how do you post easily? I ask you all. Not everyone has perfect makeup on every day. And you think from her perspective? 
many photographers just focus on image quality, but for landscapes, that's not really an issue. For portraits, the subject's comfort is crucial. Flagship phones aren't beating cameras in pure image quality, but in terms of emotional value and ease of use, they provide a better experience for users like her. We just saw it was taken on a lawn, and this grass will reflect light. You can see the skin tone in this camera photo is a bit greenish, especially in the lower part, but flagship phones automatically optimize skin tones. Doesn't it look much rosier with better complexion? Many people don't know post-processing. They feel something's off with camera photos. It's because they lack experience. Subtle color and tone differences affect perception. It's not about using a specific film to fix it. If you use a Fuji camera in this situation, you'll find the film color looks terrible. Many bought Fuji cameras for their film color, but their photos turned out awful. The film's color has high contrast, and dark areas tend to shift color. When shooting in backlit situations, faces appear darker and skin tones worse without adjustments. The film color is a disadvantage. You can see I'm using telephoto lenses here compared to full-frame 85mm f4, 120mm f4. The advantage is significant, right? Compared to flagship phone cameras, telephoto lenses have smaller apertures, so image quality isn't as good. But the model still prefers phone photos. As I said, without skills or post-processing, the final photos won't beat phone shots. Especially if you haven't used a flagship phone, you buy a camera, shoot all day. Someone with a flagship phone gets better results. Then you ask the model their preference. The model chooses the phone photos. Doesn't that feel disappointing? I've seen this situation too often. Many people give up when this happens. The root cause is what I mentioned before. is due to lack of technical skills. Like me, you have both phone and cameras APS-C and full frame cameras too. Why don't I give up? I don't think phones outperform APS-C cameras. That would be insulting to me. Because I have photography skills and post-processing abilities I know in different situations. Phones, APS-C and full frame cameras have different image quality levels, so I can choose the right tool for different shooting scenarios. Many lack the necessary skills. Even with expensive gear, photos aren't good. That's why it feels particularly frustrating like many backlit photos from before. In shooting with favorable lighting, the gap between phone and camera quality narrows. Both the X100U and Xiaomi's 14U perform excellently now, covering most daily shooting needs. For casual or non-commercial use, I believe smartphones are completely sufficient. Many asked for night scene comparisons, but intentionally didn't show them earlier. Many think an APS-C camera with a fast prime lens can outperform a phone. Many still think this way, unaware of how far flagship phone cameras have advanced. Let's look at some examples. The sun setting. On the right is the ZFC with Nikon's popular 18-140mm to lens. Let's check the widest angle. I'll adjust the exposure first as we're shooting backlit. As mentioned, this lens captures great detail. But is that always useful? For a young lady, these details might not matter much. The Ultra has skin smoothly. Don't have big advantages over flagship phones. Shot, I don't think a bulky APS-C camera offers significant image quality benefits. In particular, many people say that this lens can shoot at 140mm equivalent to 200mm. But the problem is that whether shooting environmental or everyday portraits, anything over 100mm is already very far. I don't know if these people have actually gone out to shoot portraits, but at least for me, using lenses over 100mm for so, portraits so is extremely rare. Here. Especially when traveling, you're not too familiar with the target's environment and whether there's enough space to use such a long focal length lens. So the vast majority of portraits are shot between 24mm and 85mm, making extra long lenses pretty much pointless. Because the aperture on this type of travel lens isn't very wide, for example at 50mm it's only f of 4, 8, you can clearly see that the background blur effect is quite poor, not even as good as the simulated blur on flagship phones. That's why when the girl saw this photo, she immediately picked out the one shot on a phone. The difference in background blur was gl obvious, including the skin smoothing. Even at 85mm, because you're at the long end of the zoom range, the image quality on camera lenses isn't necessarily that great. And everyone knows Nikon cameras sometimes have focusing issues. So when you add up all these drawbacks, you'll find it puts the camera at a pretty big disadvantage compared to flagship phone cameras, especially in low light when the lens aperture isn't very wide, the ISO on an F5. Three lens will skyrocket to 2800. 
For APS-C sensors, my bottom line for acceptable quality is ISO 3200 and I feel ISO 2800 is already a huge drop in image quality. So when you zoom into the photo, you can clearly see a huge loss of detail in things like hair strands with no real advantage over phone cameras. Many people just think, oh, I'm using a camera, so it must have good image quality. But you actually have to consider different situations, especially lighting, which has a big impact on the camera's image quality. At this point, to increase the light intake, you have to switch to a prime lens with a large aperture, right? This time I switched to the Yongnuo 56mm f1.4, which I've talked about before. It has pretty good image quality, right? With the aperture wide open at f1.4, this background blur effect almost matches the simulated background blur of a flagship smartphone. Can you see it? You make a detailed comparison. Some people are just stubborn, saying, oh, a real optical lens has real background blur, while the smartphones looks too fake. You insist there's no problem, but the young lady can't see it. She thinks the photos taken by the smartphone are already very good. When we zoom in on photos, we will find, oops, why is the camera's photo so blurry? Why? Because a low-end camera like the ZFC30 doesn't have body image stabilization, and the Yongnuo 56 mmf one 4 being a year a third-party lens doesn't have Nikon's VR image stabilization. So in this situation, when shooting with a shutter speed of 1%, it's very easy to get blurry images. Hence, the resolution is very different from a flagship-level smartphone. You can see that I took a lot of photos later, all of which have this problem because your camera doesn't have body stabilization and it uses a third-party lens. In this kind of dark lighting, even if you open the aperture wide and the ISO can be reduced to 200, the resolution has dropped a lot due to shaking. So at this time, you have to increase your shutter speed. For example, if I maintain it at 1%, you will find that the picture is much clearer, but the shutter speed increase also means your ISO will go up. Now that the ISO has reached 500 in very low light, you'll find that the image quality of the camera is actually very similar to that of a smartphone. To open too big a gap. In reality, camera advantages aren't as good as imagined. Many reviewers just talk in front of cameras, sitting there chattering away aimlessly, never actually shooting in real situations. At most, they shoot some lenses or take pictures of test charts, real-world issues that they'd face when shooting, they basically never encounter and can't even discuss. But if you actually go out to shoot, you'll likely face these issues. I insist on real shooting to reveal comprehensive specific problems. You can see, in increasingly dark lighting conditions, even with a large aperture, high-quality prime lens, it's not as good as flagship phone image quality, right? How big do you think the difference is? I'd choose a flagship phone. Light, small, great quality. After seeing these comparison photos, considering phone and camera weight, unless you're foolish, you won't think an APS-C camera with a wide aperture lens gives enough benefit to justify it. This environment isn't extreme enough. Many say dim light shows camera advantages. Let's take a look together. 100 Ultra's portrait mode has a night mode switch. When shooting, it activates night algorithms. In thumbnails, X100 Ultra clearly suppresses highlights. I don't think that's very good. But zoom in on the X100 Ultra image. Its resolution is truly impressive. It's not just good, it's intimidatingly good. Moreover, it will also optimize the performance of the character's skin, including the blurring of the background, which does not look very natural. I deliberately chose this angle to shoot just to see how the flagship mobile phone handles this kind of highlight in the picture. After zooming in, when the camera does not have anti-shake, there is always a chance that it will shoot paste. But the mobile phone has optical image stabilization at its telephoto end. So you don't even say that there is a very serious occurrence of pace because of the shaking of the hand. Then, for ordinary people, I think this is very important. Including the camera, sometimes the exposure is not particularly good. It is a little dark. If the mobile phone automatically optimizes a scene, then there will not be a situation like this. The background is black. When you zoom in on it, you can see that when I increase the exposure of the whole picture, you will find that the background behind it is very noisy. This is because although it seems to be quite low in the current ISO 2800, but in fact the background of the ISO, you can think that it is ISO 6400 or ISO. When you pull up the exposure, there is a lot of noise in the back. But what the photo of the phone, because it is a multi-frame composite, you can see that the background noise is very low. So this is the mobile phone through some algorithms, battle synthesis, including the optimization of character skins, all give you an all-inclusive round. The effect is very good. And when we were shooting, the lighting environment was very complicated. You can see it obvious that the red light is hitting the face. I deliberately shot at this angle to see how the current flagship phones are optimized. Noise reduction are AI are. But this is for the young lady. Rather, it's a benefit can make your face clearer. The effect of skin ether is better. For photos taken with a camera, few know how to use AI for noise reduction and post-processing.
Some can't even use smartphones, let alone computers, Photoshop, or AI software. Requirements are simply too high. But phones don't have these concerns at all. You get this result shooting directly. It's like food delivery. Everyone knows cooking is healthier and cheaper, but isn't takeout really convenient? Delivered to your door, no cooking skills needed. It's like photography. I can cook better myself. But for those who can't cook, takeout is better. Using an ultra is like takeout. The results already meet need. Some might think it's pre-made or whatever. But I ask you, isn't pre-made food tasty? For everyday shots, is it necessary to cook from scratch every time? If you think it's needed, you probably don't cook much. Camera users, we often prefer easier photo taking. For lower demands, flagship phones satisfy us, at least as an option. A girl wanting hand-free photos can accept phone camera quality. Some people still say they can't take orders with this phone. I photograph these things. All final transactions use phone photos, so can you say phones can't make money? If you shoot with a camera, you'll post these later. Take some, ah, uh, skin texture. You must handle yourself. Think how long it takes to process one photo. With so many photos, isn't it time-consuming? One photo is no big deal. But what if you take photos daily? The more you shoot, the more you'll realize the benefits of using your smartphone, including when you're out having fun. If you've seen this comparison, and if you've taken night photos, you might use a large aperture lens. Spending ages finding the right angle. It's easier to just use your phone. Results are good if you're not picky. He'll think, next time I'll just bring a few phones from before. Cameras don't seem that advantageous now. Of course, you can be stubborn. Insisting cameras are always better. I won't stop you from buying one. Everyone has their own preferences, but for me personally, I prefer some activities to be lighter. Who doesn't want things easier? Many chase a so-called ritual feeling, but it's just making life harder. It's like those who use film metering, focusing, developing film. It's a hassle for hours. The final result is just okay. Save some energy and effort. Isn't it better to enjoy life more? I just don't get that mindset of making things unnecessarily difficult, as if it's an achievement, something to be proud of. To me, it seems quite foolish. Flagship phones are advancing rapidly, like Xiaomi's previous 12S Ultra rivaling Leica for much less. That was just two years ago. Look how far we've come in such a short time. Now these flagship phones have reached this level. Imagine two years from now, how far phones will advance. Compare that to camera progress, Nikon Z, FC, Z30, Z50. How old is this CMOS tech? Can you expect in two years a camera better than Sony A? We've compared with A6700 before Sony's flagship CMOS. Their flagship APS-C cameras. They're still quite competitive. You don't even want to talk about the garbage of other houses. So if you don't believe the current flagship class phones, it's better than the quality of the camera's paintings or take a look at the more real ones like me. Comparison of actual shots. Only then can you have a correct understanding like others, those digital zones. What some photography area reviews. Really completely unbearable. I don't know what I'm talking about every day. It's all about promotion. It's all about getting you to buy those expensive shots. More than 10,000 yuan to buy an 85 G Master II. Be sure to use original lenses. This is actually after you actually buy it. Can you shoot a blockbuster? Just like I recommended to everyone. Cost-effective camera and lens Yongnuo 56 1.4 is already good. That's how it was filmed. If you don't have the post-processing technology, he was also reluctant to learn photography. So why not just buy a flagship level phone? The night scene is already like this. Now what kind of advantages does the camera have? Except for a lot of people say I use a long coat to beat the birds. You can guess I haven't ever photographed my phone with an external lens to shoot birds. If you want to see it, please deduct one. I will update this show later. I don't know. You've seen so much of it. Comparison of night photos. Whether or not there is a stereotype of cameras and phones now. There has been some improvement. I think the current consumers are really pitiful. The whole network can be said to be global. Except for me, no one is making this kind of actual comparison. Those KOLs are all taking the money of the manufacturers blowing there. You have to spend money on more expensive lenses. The more expensive the camera, the better the image quality. But in reality, many people spend a lot of money. I bought it back and filmed it for a long time. Why is the result so ugly and ugly? The quality of the paintings is not good. Then look at my comparison like this. It's not as good as a flagship phone. Isn't it quite unbearable? One more point, many people have broken the defense after seeing this comparison ran past and scolded me. It's useless for you to scold me. Do you understand? Now the camera quality is so poor I didn't do it. The picture quality of the flagship mobile phone is so good I didn't cause it. This is an objective fact. Even if I don't do this comparison video, it does not represent the image quality of a flagship level mobile phone. It's not as good as a camera photo. The camera quality should be poor or bad. How to develop flagship mobile phones or how will it develop? The quality of the rear picture will be better. Precisely because no one compares like me, I was the first whistleblower. I understand that the gun hits the first bird, but scolding me can't change the facts. You can say that you are stubborn and stubborn. 
The picture quality of the camera is better. How can the camera be more layered? Color reduction is better. It doesn't mean anything because of any one person. Just spend money on a flagship level phone. Whatever you want, its performance is better than the camera. When more and more people have found flagship level mobile phones better than APS-C format cameras, no one is buying an APS-C format camera, and you can see it. Now the sales of cameras have been declining year after year. Why? Because everyone is not stupid. You can see it. Now the advancement of the flagship level of the phone. So after the camera. As crosstalk becomes less common, dealers will only raise prices more. If I'm buying a camera, go ahead and pay more. No one's stopping you. But for flagship phones, new models come out yearly, making last year's much cheaper. An Ultra costs 5-6k now, 3-4k next year, and 2-3k the year after. Your camera rises 500 yearly. How many fools will keep buying cameras? Pair front-facing phone cameras with large aperture lenses in low light. Next time we'll discuss the tough issue, even for Chinese cameras, dynamic range.